previously on Hades Developing Hell. So the first step was, would people give the game a chance, given some of the heat around the Epic Games Store on Steam? A lot of developers, I think, would, would agree that you only feel at your peak in the last few months of development. It's, it's almost tragic. The alarm system is reporting a trouble signal. I worry about everyone, though. I worry about all of them. We're practiced at it, but no one has practice doing it like this. So I guess we'll see how, how it goes. Um, three or four of us are in the office. There's some of the stuff that we needed to be together for and uh, be able to talk about. Amir, are you available to, uh, um, for any HCTS? I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get into our Discord, but uh, it's, I've been clicking on crosswalks and fucking fire hydrants for 10 minutes trying to get through the capture. But, but, are, but do you know that you're not a robot? <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know, now I don't know what to think. <laughs> The game will be announced at 7 a.m. on Thursday this coming week, uh, Pacific time. But then it will actually come out at 8. So there's this awkward period of time between... <laughs> it would be like the shortest release date announcement ever. Our release date is in one hour. <laughs> um, it's better not to even announce that, right? It's better just to sit tight and let people we, just freak we, out for an hour. Are we going to RT all the Nintendo stuff? That yeah, the most sense. aggressive thing is that is retweeting the Nintendo stuff, which is all they actually just sent us over the copy, Greg. I don't know if you saw it or but it's coming coming later today. The issue with fast following it is that I think it just sort of takes some of the wind out of our sails when we do announce it, because basically we want one impactful announcement that's like, yo, game is out. Get it here. Get it here. If less than an hour before that, we're like, it's coming out in an hour, then that's going to basically like absorb most of the juice so the thing that seems the most impactful like in terms of what we could do like promotionally is the the first thing from us that day is game is out here but bam because that's that's the thing you want everybody to interact with right if there's one thing and later in the day yeah we're retweeting nintendo and tweeting reviews or whatever else will the similar to the switch egs is also is also manual at eight they'll do it they'll do it yeah they're doing it can't find Hades on the store at all. So. Um, I'm trying to see if the patch, I'm not getting the patch. Fuck. Yeah, the patch should be out, right? Yeah, fuck man, that means people can get this without the patch version. Let me see if I can even find the game. It's not out, maybe that's why. Yeah, Will, this, would, needs to, this needs to be the thing we do right now, I think. Basically, tomorrow, at 7 o'clock in the morning, there's a thing called a Nintendi... Nin, wow. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> a Nintendo Mini Direct Partner Showcase, which is a fancy way of saying uh, third-party titles only, basically, are going to be showcased there. Somewhere in there, they'll make the announcement that Hayes is coming later today. We will then make no announcement, basically. Um, at 7.30, we will start the go live stuff where we'll push the Steam and EGS builds to make sure they work and start cropping the YouTube videos and marketing assets and stuff. At 8 a.m., the game comes out on the Switch, PC, and the Epic Game Store. On PC, there's also the Mac versions on both the Epic Game Store and, and PC. And then all our announcement stuff will go live saying it's out today. Basically, then around um, 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll be streaming the game from the office onto Steam. Uh, there's a lot of excitement out there for what we're about to launch. We know it's real. We know a lot of people have been waiting for 1.0 to jump into the game. And so uh, I think we're gonna make a lot of people really happy tomorrow, which is, which is very, very, very exciting.
Um. I'm writing Sarah. CC me on that, can you? Dude, something is really wrong. Just it not being out, you mean? Yeah, dude, this sucks. Yeah, because we're on we're on standby. Yeah, everything is just waiting for this. The patches aren't live either, so actually, like nothing is live at all. The the patches and all things go live until the store page is live, right? They're all connected. Okay. So it's, it looks like it's <laughs> it's actually <laughs> it looks like it's out on NOE. It is because okay. Nikolai just found it. I've purchased it, so, so I can't see the I can't see the discount being live. Someone else needs to. Um, the question is, did the patch go live? The patch isn't live. Fuck. I was hoping Will could start to talk a little bit about expectations for tomorrow, and then Greg, anything else on on reviews and outreach and that kind of stuff. In terms of sort of expectation setting for what a Steam early access release looks like, it's kind of a funny thing. Yeah, similar to what Amir was saying, early access is kind of like a semester long course where your grade is dependent on work you do the whole year, um, the whole semester. And uh, you know, most of the game releases in the past is like 100% of your grade is based on the final exam or final project. So you know, to a certain extent, we know what to expect a little bit more than, than we have with any of the previous titles, but um, there's still um, a bunch of stuff that goes into making a successful early access launch. Um, one is, you know, we've done done the work. Um, right now, Hades is the most reviewed product on Steam of any game that we've ever released, which is pretty amazing. Uh, players have played more Hades at this point than they've played any of the previous titles by ours. So that, that's pretty wild. The reason why we were really passionate about trying to have Switch sim ship with uh, the Steam version is it does make it a new product for a new audience. Often a challenge that there is with an early access product is that it's kind of a known quantity. So for press, it's a little bit harder to get excited about covering the game because they've already covered the game. So bringing in the Switch version, our hope is that um, we'll really get a nice burst of reviews. Um, so we, it's there on the featured list. We, it's, it's there, but um, the patch isn't live, as far as I can tell. Every time I go to launch Hades, it's, which means people can buy this version. We should probably, um, we should probably just make our announcements because and resolve the patch. We can't. We, ah, we should dude, wait definitely. Yeah, I agree with you. Do you think? So, I have, like everyone's fighting out, so basically we're lo we're, we're beginning to like lose. We'll yeah. lose steam on it soon. Okay. I mean. Yeah, the, Blast I can send out to test final one with all links. Oh, uh, the blast that we can do later. It's fine. I think it's more okay. the social media stuff that needs to happen now. Um, yeah, I mean it's not the patch version of the game. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a thing. There's some stuff in there that's pretty bad. If you think we're we just got to do it. Then yeah, I, I think I since there's no ETA on it, I, I don't think we should. And basically, people are buying it now. We can't really do anything about that. Okay. Fuck. You know, in the middle of all this, I think reviews are going to hit um, at 8 p.m. 8 a.m. Uh, sorry, tomorrow morning. So basically, an hour after the announcement. There should be quite a few because we've sent code out to close to 100 outlets, like 90 plus outlets, including some international outlets. Um, and we've also sent it to some, like some of the biggest uh, content creators. You know, hopefully the combination of those things will just kind of get us into the conversation at such a busy and exciting time. Um, Nintendo, of course, is going to do an awful lot for that single handedly, but you all know how the internet is. You have your like, you know, 15 seconds, uh, much less uh, 15 minutes of fame, but it's very fleeting. Um, and our hope is that um, the, the game sort of comes out, it comes out the gates with a bang and stays on everybody's minds in a good way, uh, hopefully for a while. Well, so that's not even the thing that I'm really most concerned about, even though that also sucks. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about the, I'm worried about the patch. 
out. The version of the game that's out there is like four weeks old. Yeah. What is Eurogamer essential? Is the, do they give numbers? I think they don't, right? Okay, so then I that think, I think, I think the main thing then is we just need to confirm from someone on the team that someone who downloads the game after 8 o'clock in the morning got the patch version, in which case all the review code he sent is fine. Oh, IGN. What, what is it? Is it foul that I'm just going to scroll to the bottom and no, tell you I'm the answer to scrolling. that? I'm still scrolling Nine. too. Oh my god, it's so thorough. Nine? What? Nine? Nice. Every editor's choice. Where did it get a nine? IGN. IGN. Nice. Okay, I'm downloading a patch. Yeah. It's the game. Oh. Game, game out. It, it, are you playing? It, it is unpatched for you. It's patched. Once oh, I it forced it. Once I forced it. When Darren okay. bought the game, it was patched. Okay, so we're just getting kind of inconclusive reports. No, no, we're we're conclusive. What's what the what's conclusive is if you buy the game, it's fine. Oh, Everyone you, you sent already a already have it, then you may have to. Manually. No, you. It's not. You may have to. You have to. You definitely have to. So if you if it yeah. matters, everyone we sent review code to has yeah. to yeah. manually patch if they want the we latest. Should, uh, we should try redeeming the review code right now to see if it forces the patch. The answer to that was no, according to Paige. No. It did not force the patch. Hey guys, the takeover is live. You should put it on the big screen. The world's largest yeah. Steam takeover. Get in on that. What is this, 80 inches? We, uh, this is a thing. Oh, that's so cool. That yeah. animation, Josh did that? Yeah, Josh did that's that. That's awesome. Yes. This is our first takeover? It's our first takeover in the history of our company on Steam. It only took 10 years. Hey man, we worked our way to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty exciting. That's really cool. <laughs> so today started with a lot of activity. Um, we just pushed everything live, um, and it's live on on Nintendo Switch and for PC and Mac on at the Game Store and Steam, and it's 1.0. We're out of early access, which is very exciting. Emotionally, the main way in which it's different is when we worked on something like Bastion or Transistor or Pyre. There's this question that you have, which is like, will anyone care about this? And then you also wonder of the people who will care about it and take a chance on it, will they like it? Those are the two questions you have. There was never a question on this one, will anyone care or um, will enough people be interested um, that we'll be able to do another one together? The early access has kind of shown that that is the case. We will be able to, to stick together as a team despite everything that's going on and, and do more together. So that leaves, will they like it? Will they like it? And um, uh, it's too early to say. The thing about Hades is it's a game that you can play for dozens or even hundreds of hours. So the answer to will they like it is going to take a little bit longer, I think, for us to really know, especially for the people who kind of stuck with us through the early access development. And then for the people who held out, I have no idea what their expectations were um, about the game, and I guess we'll see if those are met. And um, we're starting to see what, what um, game reviewers and critics think. And uh, maybe later today we'll get a sense of what uh, streamers and, and people who make YouTube content and stuff think. Hello everybody! I'm Amir Rao, I'm the studio director and co-founder of Supergiant Games, and I am one of the designers who worked on Bastion, Transistor, Pyre, and this here video game, Hades, which is out of early access today into version 1.0. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> so basically, yesterday was the best, most successful launch day of any game we've ever had. And this game has already launched like five times. <laughs> so, so um, <laughs> keep launching it. Yeah, keep, we'll gotta keep launching it, I guess, 1.0 every day. Um, but yeah, but it's, uh, it's really good. Um, so, you know, just some, some basic numbers. Uh, we 
or close to 15,000 people just playing it like right now on PC. Um, you can always see that. Um, and then, Will, I don't know if you got the DAO. Uh, 94K. So 94,000 people played it yesterday on PC. Wow. Just like coming back, returning players and, and people picking it up for the first time. So that's like a crazy, crazy number. On Switch, um, there are also seemingly hella players as well because we are the number one uh, downloadable title on Switch. Um, and we're the, we're the number two like all around. Yeah, right, like, right next to Mario. Right next to Mario, yeah. Yeah, a little known independent yes. video game. Here and yeah. in the UK, uh, and yeah. Greg, I guess, I don't know if anything more on reviews. The, the, the Switch Metacritic score is like ridiculous right now. And again, I, I personally, to be blunt with y'all, I just, I can't, my, my brain just has to assume it will go down. But if it stays where it is, it's like a top three highest rated Switch game next to Zelda and Mario. I'm like, oh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. It just, it just that it's like in that territory is is amazing, and again, like a just a testament to the to the work everybody did. So I guess bask in it for now. As part of people being excited about the game right now, we're getting like uh, kind of a level of mainstream interest that I personally haven't seen in some time. Of like the you know we're, we're I'm with the I'm with the Sun Times in the UK. Can you send us a switch code and that that level of thing that like we've gotten once in a while, but normally you know the, the bigger publications don't really care and we're starting to get that as some of that interest um so we're tracking some some technical stuff as we always are and one of the technical things we're tracking right now is a switch issue that may cause us to have to make a patch very very quickly just needs to be um, done quite carefully so gavin is there anything else you wanted to say about just tracking the technical stuff at all no that's you know that's the main thing right now um with you know the 94,000 daily PC players like said, they, they rack up they rack up obscure issues very very quickly so um, we have that going on but it's stable enough that you know we can pay attention to the switch more um, are we still attempting to do some sort of reddit AMA at oh, some yeah. point yeah we um, thank you we we will um we just we postponed it from today uh, because they they basically had another one lined up for spirit spirit fairer so we got a rain check there's a really really nice thread about the whole game there that um like kind of blew up yesterday and was the number one uh, topic about the game uh, on the N nintendo switch uh, subreddit basically it's just people really really happy with that version of the game so that that was cool to see um and it it will really nicely pave the way for our ama when it does happen because it's like a lot of people they they want they would like to hear from us the commitments that are on the table for sure the ones that are definitely happening just in a broad sense are um still have cross saves to put into the game for for switch and pc and, and epic and then we also still uh, have the japanese version to work on as well so those are kind of things that are definitely happening in the future and then you know all the other pieces we we still need to discuss and and figure out how we're going to do and like i said yesterday the like main the primary task if you are not actively supporting some part of the launch is to uh, try and uh, try and get some rest. Alrighty. So um, I think that's all. I'll see everyone in Slack and all the other places. Thanks again. Bye. 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 Thanks guys. Bye. 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 That's everybody. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Woo. See ya. Bye. Bye. Hades is a one-of-a-kind roguelite that sets the bar for creatively combining wildly different genres together and using their strengths to complement each other in unexpected ways. Its blend of satisfying, Twitch-based action with countless modifiers to build replayability, dating simulator-esque character interactions, and turning failure into a thing you look forward to as a means of progressing the story all coalesce to an experience that is more than the sum of its parts. I'm over 50 hours in, 70 escape attempts deep, and I can't stop thinking about my next trip to hell because Hades is an experience I never want to end. When I'm not playing Hades, I'm thinking about how cool it'd be to build the Exegriff machine gun with Lightning Boon's combo that got me that first victorious run, but also throw in some critical damage. Hades is one of the best roguelikes you can play. 
An interesting cast of characters anchored by the lovable Zagreus is worth learning about, while the seemingly never-ending upgrades always provide something to work towards. A few more bosses and environments would have helped the long road toward the true ending, but with so much weapon and build variety, each run offers a unique and rewarding trip through the underworld. Hey, this is Greg. It is October 1st, and today, what is it, Thursday. It's two weeks after launch. It's been insane. This two, These two weeks went by very, very quickly. I'm dressed all fancy because this is going to be our launch party right now. Obviously, we can't do that in person, but we have made some arrangements. Uh, our folks, uh, Caitlin and JP, have made these like super awesome little uh, drinks and things that they have sent to everyone in the mail. So we're we're making do as with the rest of this stuff. So we got a little mixer packet. Oh, cute. Hades Ambrosia. If it doesn't taste like legit Ambrosia, it will be upset. Um, and then we have pomegranate. These are like mixer drinks for the party tonight. We got almond popcorn, some sort of cookie, sea salt caramels. We got banana chips. The healthiest chip. My my snack collection has grown exponentially. <laughs> so inside the package, it looks like we have some very awesome music by our fantastic composer, Darren Corb. He did a very, very good job. Addressed to me. Thank you. So this is a collection of coasters that Caitlin had made. And it's all the little Shade emotes. The squad. Tag yourself. I'm this one. Put your opening stuff in here. Here's the Haku. <laughs> and we have these beautiful monogrammed glasses. Look at that. Really awesome. Thank you so much to Caitlin and whomever else who uh, sent out all these packages. These are really really cool so that has been my unboxing video for the launch party boxes uh for super giant games for our launch party of hades tonight so really excited to see how that goes uh and this is me and haku signing off bye it's a special occasion um and the launch ended up uh like wildly exceeding all of our expectations and it's still going strong. It's completely nuts. Uh, people love the freaking video game. Um, so we're about to take a moment to actually celebrate that. Uh, try and take it in. I haven't really absorbed it. It's been so busy. Um, uh, but yeah, the part where people really, really like it is is for real. And um, I, think, I think all of us are just still kind of probably reeling from it to some extent, but it'll be nice to have this little um, get together, I think in a few minutes. So we'll see how that goes. Figured I would check in beforehand. Do you think um, Hades will be nominated for game of the year? We will find out. There's yeah, we're certainly find out people have been, I mean, we've never had a game kind of at that level. Um, like I think I think it's shifted a lot too because there used to be in the Bastion days it was like oh indie game of the year you kind of it was it meant a lot for sure but it there was like this bigger divide it was like there, a sense that there's no way really that that it would be unfair uh, for like a smaller game to compete against a bigger game but then then Journey the following year like won like swept game mm -hmm. of the year awards um, including like for independent games so then people are like oh wait and i think the lines have kind of blurred you know independent teams have gotten bigger and stuff too so yeah we've never gotten big game of the year nominations i don't think yeah, yeah. this would be cray cray if it if it does happen for that i would be pretty surprised and impressed so less than one minute to go we we threw together this quick um this quick zoom call to to watch together the game of the, uh, the game awards 2020 nomination announcement live stream um, there's been a lot of excitement around Hades, so we're curious to see if we are in the conversation or 
regardless of that, uh, what what games get picked because it's been a real interesting year uh, for for games. I was talking to Amir about how like Final Fantasy VII remake that feels like it was a long time ago because I think it was pre. <laughs> I that's my one of my favorite games of the year, but it was like I think it came out in like February. Um, yeah, um, yeah. May as well Jacket. be an infinity ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it, right. It may as well. Feel, feels like it feels like the year really started and yeah oh, here we <laughs> didn't really get going until March you know <laughs> well this will be this will be interesting on December 10th the world will come together to celebrate video games at the game awards streaming live everywhere hey I'm Jeff Keeley and welcome to the nominee announcement for best performance the nominees are Ashley Johnson as Ellie the Kicking last of right us off. part two Laura Bailey as Abby, The Last of Us Part Understandable. Two. Understandable. Yep. Daisuke Shuji as Jin Sakai, Ghost of yeah. Tashima. Yeah. Logan dude. Cunningham as Hades in Hades. <laughs> and Najee Jeter. Oh, Logan. Oh, dude. Logan. Wait, am I ahead of you guys? I think I'm ahead of you guys. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. That Ghost makes me Tashima. so happy. Hades. Hades. Ori and the Will of Boom, the Boom, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, man. The Last of Us. For best score in music, Come on. those nominees <laughs> are... Doom Eternal, composed by Mick Gordon. Final Fantasy VII Remake, composed by Nobuo Uematsu, Masashi Hamasu. Oh man, so I'm behind. Oh wow, you got it? Yeah, you're ahead. <laughs> you're ahead of you're ahead best of score of music. You're, you're, you're a couple seconds. Yeah. And the Will of Wisps, composed Congratulations. by Gareth Coker. Thank you. Congrats. In the category of best narrative, the nominees are Thirteen <laughs> Sentinels, yeah, 13 Aegis Sentinels. Rim, written by George Kamatani. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Written by Kazushigi Nojima, Matomu Toriyama, Hiroki Awaki, and Sashi Hirano. Ghost of Tsushima. Writers Ian Ryan, Liz Abel, Patrick Congrats, Downs, man. and Jordan Whoa. McGonagall. Yeah. Congrats. 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 And The Last of Us Part Holy 2. Holy crap. Writers Neil Druckmann That's... and Haley Gross. Wow. And the nominees this year for Best Independent Game well. are Carrion, Fall Guys, yeah, that's it. There we are. Hades, <laughs> Spelunky yeah. 2, wow. And Spirit Fair. It's pretty cool. For best action game, the nominees are Doom Eternal. I wonder if we're even at oh, is Doom <laughs> and Tough <laughs> Life right. in this category. Leo this this is, is a crazy category. This is a heavy hitter. One Punch Man, a hero nobody knows. An Undernight in Birth, EXE, Late Clear. I'm so in glad Jeff Keighley had to say game, the Undernight Rebirth together, uh, full title. The nominees are. <laughs> Animal yeah. Crossing New Horizons. Family Crash game. 4. It's hey, about this is a family nine. game. Yep. It's about, <laughs> it's it's about, about family. <laughs> best Mario family game. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit for best game direction, which recognizes outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. The nominees are Final Fantasy VII Remake from Square Enix. Best game direction. Ghost of Tsushima. Really? From Sucker Punch Productions. Oh. Oh. This is six. Games. That's a, oh, that's seven. 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 Holy crap. And, 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 the and I mean, us part two from not we will the have to us. have been nominated finally, for the next thing. Half of the jury comprised <laughs> if we got all the theory, the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah. But we'll <laughs> see. I mean, I don't. I am proud to announce the six nominees. The next one is. Is it always six? Oh, this is technical. Go game of the year. Okay. Yeah. Holy, this is the one. I wonder why it's six. Do they usually do six? Sure. Animal Crossing New Horizons Animal Crossing. from Nintendo. Doom, Doom Eternal from id Software. Final Fantasy VII Remake yep, from Square Enix. Dang. Oh Ghost my Shima goodness. That's, 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 that's pretty that sweet. That's crazy. Uh, and damn. So Ghost, one, two, three, four, two. five, six, seven, from eight Dottie. nominations. Yeah, yeah, I think that's eight. Is that the most? So cool. It's a yeah. lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hope it's the most. Yeah. That's wild. What? Jeez. I'm. Uh, um. It's funny. The for some reason the Logan best performance one was like. Yeah. Maybe my because one. it was the first one cited, yeah, but like. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. Lo Logan, because Logan like. He just has his voice to work with. He has to compete with like yes. full, full like body capture, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, high tech, yeah. state of the art. So he it. has to like kind of has to be like an overwhelmingly amazing voice performance, which yeah. it is. Um, what, Greg, what's the list? You have them all listed? Yeah, I have them all. I posted them all in, um, yeah, so best performance, art direction, music, yeah. narrative, best uh, independent game, action game, 
game direction and game of the year. Uh, congratulations. She's, I mean, that's that's team. uh, Quite. Yeah. Quite a way to start a Wednesday. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) To start every Wednesday. We should, we should Tweet? tweet something. Happy New Year, Greg. Yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> Indeed. Hey, good to see you again. Yeah, you, likewise. It's good to see you guys. Uh, how you doing? Uh, do, doing okay. You know, when the launch happened on, um, on September 17th, the, the kind of arc of it for me reminded me a lot of how I felt uh, after Bastion, though it was even more different than that, where I think on the day of the launch itself, it was unclear that the game was like a hit, I guess. The initial reviews that we got uh, were very good, but not astronomical either. Our, our, you know, fresh out the gate, we're getting kind of like 8.5 out of 10. It's like, okay, solid couple of nines. Okay, good. It took a few days to be like, wait a minute, this thing climbed up the Nintendo Switch kind of best-selling charts and, and it's staying there. Um, and we got to the second position just after the, um, the Mario 3D World game. So it's like, holy, we've, you know, we've, we've jumped ahead of these other games that, that came out at the same time and, and then some of Nintendo's own games, you know, Mario Kart and Animal Crossing were like, whoa, we're, we're doing better than these games. That's incredible. And then reviews kept piling on and those 8.5s turned out to be like more the kind of statistical outliers. And suddenly it was just kind of like tens and nines and stuff. And it's like, whoa, what, what is happening here? And, and then just like, the reaction to it in general, just the volume of emails that were coming in and um, that sort of thing. And then we start getting, you know, nominated for big awards and then winning some of those awards as well. We're past like 45 Game of the Year awards as of right now. And this is, this is not including awards that aren't Game of the Year. I don't know that we have fully, I don't know that I've fully sort of processed it. Uh, Happy New Year, Amir. Thank you. Uh, how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm very good. Yeah. We are on the other side of having shipped Hades. Does, does it feel like you've shipped Hades at this stage? It won't feel like I've shipped Hades until we finish episode six of the Noclip documentary. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like this is, my last, this is my last obligation, but also it's just been a part of the, uh, of the fabric of everything we're doing. You know, we... We've had the cameras rolling and been recording meetings and all that kind of stuff. So for me, I feel like, okay, once I do this, then it'll really be done. But I've also told myself that about literally everything that's happened since September 17th. It's like, well, once we, you know, get this patch out, once we do cross saves, you know, once we get the patch after that out, then we'll be done for real. But I mean, the truth is from having Bastion, Transistor, and Pyre with us is that you never they never really leave you, right? You live with those things forever, um, or as long as we can see. So uh, Hades has now just become a part of us, I guess, <laughs> in some way. I think things have finally slowed down, which is, we were wondering how long that would take. Mm. It took a while. It took months and months and months. Things are finally slowed down. You know, in our other three games, there was like a month of sort of 
uh, being connected to the thing and patching and all this kind of stuff and thinking about um, what we were going to do next. And within a month, people were taking their refresh and their time off and, and, and coming back and, and rejuvenated to figure out what did we learn and what are we going to do next. And that same process took us four months this time. It took forever. You know, it took four times longer because we just had so much stuff still. And then it felt like every week something new was happening, something amazing. You know, we were nominated for this or someone declared, you know, we were that or this review came out or uh, this streamer is playing the game now. The Washington Post is talking about the game. Time is talking about the game. These like huge things that suddenly like even our parents know what that is. <laughs> so we're talking about the Parento sphere. It's like stuff that leaves the orbit of games and, and joins uh, the, the bigger conversation. So. You know, it's been a delight and a joy that these amazing things are happening, but it's also meant we just never turned off. What are they doing, Amir? We're doing best art direction. Go Tsushima one. Best action game. Doom, Hades. Holy fuck! We just won best action game. <laughs> wow! So the Game Awards was really, really amazing because it was a live show with like I don't know how I don't know how Jeff does this stuff, but it was like a live show with a zillion people. It had like the whole planet watching, and um, including my parents. Honestly, it was just kind of cool to be connected back to other human beings and also through the production feed connected to this wide world of video games. I had like absolutely ridiculous technical issues happen literally minutes, like I think like less than two minutes before my webcam ceases working. And then my like dogs went absolutely ballistic over something as well. There was like a knock at the door, which uh, sends my dogs into like a, a fury. And this, this like in, a, in the evening. Shit! Tell me. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I, I can't do anything! Can you open the door and tell them they need to go, like we're right in the middle of a call and they need to go away? You know, the atmosphere couldn't have been more different than, than our debut at the Game Awards back in 2018 when we were there physically in this, in this beautiful theater with a big audience, you know, filled with uh, celebrities, not just from our own industry, but from other industries as, as well. Here it's just like sitting where I do uh, sit every day, basically just with a slightly nicer shirt on and then just kind of waiting on pins and needles for our, our categories to come up. We, we won in two of those categories for best uh, independent game and, and best action game, uh, which is two more game awards than we've ever won. So it was, a, it was an amazing night in that we, we were so kind of heavily present for so many of those categories and, and, and picked up a couple. Um, but we didn't get to, you know, we didn't get to make our like live speeches or, or whatever. No one, no one had to speak. Logan sitting there on a live feed, Greg sitting there on a live feed, me sitting there on a live feed, no one had to talk. We won best action game and best indie game. So that was cool. I said it at the time, but it's just one of those things where those productions that we were next to in the game of the year category were really big video games in which our whole team, if we had worked on those games, would be like working on one tiny part of it. You know, a lot of us had worked at AAA studios before this, so we like know that a lot goes into making such a big game and it's really hard to make such a big game. Yeah, it was amazing to be able to be so sort of so small and be on that stage. Even in those days following the September 17th launch of Hades when the game, you know, started to stick on bestseller charts and started to get these really good reviews, you still don't anticipate that like, yeah, we're gonna be a game of the year winner and nominee, you know, next to the Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima and stuff like that. It's but that's that's like where we were just in that conversation and you know we were chosen as like Time magazines and the Washington Post's game of the year and stuff like that. It's like so that's again, you know, we we never knew we were working on that game. How you doing, Dan? Doing all right. Yeah, all things considered, pretty good. <laughs> when you look back on all the music you made for Hades, um, you know that feeling where you finally sort of made something you can step away and look at it. What, what comes up for you there? Yeah, for for Hades, I feel like 
I really enjoyed the style of music and it was a lot of fun to make. Like just, I could kind of cut loose more, I think for Hades than I have been able to in the past. I was able to rock out and really lean into my desire to do that. And then even go further past my comfort zone of how hard I feel I'm allowed to rock, <laughs> you know, on past games, you know, normally there's like a week where everybody's excited about it, talking about it and then you move on. But the fact that people have continued sort of talking about it and playing it and, and people are playing it every day, people are streaming it. I mean, that, that's that been really crazy to see the sort of volume of the response increase so much. Part of it has to do with the, the sort of context in which 1.0 was released. I mean, it's a game about doing the same thing over and over again and trying to escape hell. So it's like, you know, maybe a little too close, you know, <laughs> too close to people's regular lives. Jen, hi. It's uh, it's great to catch up finally. Um, I know everyone was working from home back in uh, March, but obviously your situation was a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you probably already know that Supergiant Games is a company policy. We were working um, from Friday or working from home on Fridays every week. So actually, the transition for me was very, very easy. And in fact, because I was pregnant at the time, all kinds of things happen with pregnant ladies, including being very, very tired. And so in a lot of ways, uh, transitioning to my home office actually afforded me the ability to maintain as much productivity if not more productivity during the pandemic especially it's not like i can go like to tj maxx or home depot and you know make the perfect crib for my baby from scratch using hammer and nails by the time i left on maternity leave there were about two months of production left i knew with so much certainty i had so much confidence in the team as a whole that it would be incredible that i also felt this was the perfect moment to see what happens when you just leave. That is an incredible feeling uh, to know that your team is so well equipped to take care of a product during its most sensitive time. It's, it was and still remains incredibly hard to digest the level of success we've experienced. Not just like sales, but the community support the incredible fan artist community to know that something you've made with just 20 people has reached so many others and that they are saying these really incredibly nice things about it it's like no guy come on don't it's not that good right <laughs> oh god come on, you're just being nice i qualify because you know maybe in saying this i'll jinx it but like hades is the fourth highest rated game on Steam, like, period, across the tens of thousands of games there, including basically all my favorite games ever, or a whole bunch of them, we rate higher than all those? That's like a, it's a weird feeling. How can you qualify it other than it's a success on every level that we intended and a whole bunch of ones that we had no idea would even be possible. And then people are sometimes surprised that we're surprised. But I think that's weird on another level because as you can see in the Noclip documentaries, we launched this game like four times or something, right? Like, like this game has been launched so many times and then it's been updated so many times. So sometimes we, we ask ourselves, you know, like when did Hades become what it, what it was? Because it was something that people enjoyed for a long time. But you know, the combination of, of declaring it 1.0 of of putting the ending into the game and, and saying it was done and you know also you know being on the Nintendo Switch where many more people uh, might have been waiting for, for that experience as well. Just all of that suddenly, I guess, um, changed the conversation around the game. The fact that our 1.0 launch kind of lived up to the expectations of, of our early access players while also I, I think like uh, for many players evidently exceeding their expectations. I feel really good um, about that. When we're in the thick of the pandemic trying to wrap up development, I was talking to you about our plans for the ending of the game and that it was going to have this kind of unusual structure and how do you end a game that can be played forever. That was like something that we were asking ourselves and I was asking myself from the very beginning of the project. So it was really exciting to, to do that and then to see that people enjoyed how we handled it. 
on a more personal level, you know, making sure that the story of this game and these characters that, that I hold so near and dear could conclude in, in a way that, that kind of did right by these characters. Um, it's hard to end things in a, in a, in a satisfying way. I think of so many TV shows and whatever where people are like, they love them all the way through and then, and then, and then the ending stinks for whatever reason and it like ruins everyone's entire memory of the show. It's like you were invested in the show for years and years and now you're telling me you think it's garbage just because you didn't like the ending, but that's how it works. Uh, things can turn retroactively bad through a bad ending and the endings of our games are a really big deal for us and for, for me personally. Uh, so yeah, a lot of relief when we, when, when, that, when that turns out okay. Right at the start, right before we started filming, before we sort of even Back talked in... about this thing, uh, you approached us, I remember, because you, you, know, you come from the media side as yeah. well, and you wanted to sort of showcase what the reality of making games is, right? Yeah. And we tried our best, but we weren't there for every single moment, right? So, you know, looking back at this series, what are the parts you think haven't come across? What are the elements yeah. of game design? It's a, it's a great, it's a great question. You know, when I think about what parts haven't come across or don't come across, I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is just some of the late nights alone. It, it's always a challenge, I think, with any game, just knowing when you're done, the, the moment when you, like, walk away from your computer and go back down. Like, that's a moment that would be interesting, that would be really hard to capture. Just the slog of it, um, the part where there's just a bunch of stuff that has to be done and it's tinkering away at something that, uh, with, with little immediate evidence as to what is even being done or something like that. And this, you know, Hades turned out to be this big, like content heavy game. People are like, oh wow, I've played all this time and there, you know, none of the audio lines have repeated. It's like, because we put a lot of audio lines in the game. Yeah, I think there's something like um, 22,000 ish lines of dialogue in the game. Uh, I believe Zagreus has about 8,500 or 9,000 or something by himself. Uh, I think Hades probably has the second most lines of any character, um, over a thousand. And yeah, I mean, I, I think there's over like 300,000 words or something in the game. You know, I'm, I'm just thrilled by the, the sort of general response to the VO actually, especially given how we finished the VO and we kind of sent all the actors kind of crappy USB mics. And I just was like, well, I'll fix it in post and do my best to match it. And, you know, and, and it worked out, you know, more or less. I think when it's safe to go back, that's when we should go back and not a minute before, you know, but, but, but I'll be happy to go back to the office for some amount of days a week. I think it's just, uh, there, there is some valuable stuff that you can't quite recreate in this kind of environment, especially creative discussions and, and that kind of thing. Pre-production process and planning process, so much of that is the organic part. Um, like once you hit production, you know, everything is kind of, there's a flow to it. It's on rails. You kind of know what you're supposed to be doing. Whereas uh, in this kind of purgatory between projects, uh, that's, that's when I think the lack of face-to-face -face communication and just ad hoc in-person conversation is going to maybe hurt the process, but maybe not. Again, um, maybe we'll just make that much more of an effort to make ourselves available to each other. How can you miss people you talk to on Zoom all day? Somehow, you still can. It's just one of those things where enough time has passed that I almost forget all the little parts of it. And then I'll see, you know, JP at the Game Awards thing or something like that. And then you'll remember, oh yeah, this is what that was. So yeah, I mean, I miss, I miss everybody. I can't wait till there is a time when it's safe to see each other. I remember feeling like this immense pride in the team because each of them could probably just glance at the general blast radius of the game and find something that was representing a thing they did personally. Because it's a small enough team and, you know, everyone did a piece of it. For some people it's their first game and for some people it's one of many games they've made. Um, but all of us got to kind of share that together. We were really lucky on our first game, Bastion, that it got received so well. And I think the seven of us had a bond from working on that game, but the kind of response we got brought us together. At the same time, because this type of response isn't guaranteed, you have to be doing it for reasons that are not to get this type of response. <laughs> um, and so we obviously really like what we do and really love working together. 
And so when things like this happen, it just feels overwhelming and sometimes mysterious. I, I have like always had a mentor uh, and a leader who was inspirational to me. He basically told me that you have to be really careful about the stories you tell yourself. Almost the temptation of success is to say, your process must have been good because the game was good, right? And it's really tempting when things go so well to, uh, to make that story be whatever you want it to be, right? Uh, that it was all you or that it was all the team or um, you know it was, it was all X, Y, or Z thing, but it really was a lot of things and a lot of things that even you don't control. You know, we had really good partners, we had really amazing fans, we had like an incredible team, we had the right game at the right time. And so, you know, part of what our job is after the game is done is to really understand what happened. And that takes a long time. What's next? <sighs> if I tell you it'll it'll just be upsetting. We're doing a patch, Danny. <laughs> That's what's next. We're opening a patch on the test server. We're going to fix some Hades bugs. That is literally what I'm about to go up and do. I'm going to review the change notes with Greg and Gavin, and we're going to make sure that it's all sensible, and then we're going to put it on a test branch, and then we're going to put it on, you know, the PC and the Switch, and, and we're going we're to make a patch. What type of game would you like to make next? I don't know. Oh my God, it doesn't even matter. Because it's honestly, it's like, it's, it's, you know, what type of game do we want to make next? That's the actual really salient question, not what kind of game I want to make next. Um, yeah, we got to figure that out.